Yeah, so I think we uh, were looking at natural ventilation the other day and we came to the conclusion when I have two windows or two openings in series. That means I have something like, something like, you know, I have something like uh, this, one opening somewhere here, one opening somewhere there, right? There is one opening here, one opening there, and area is A1, this area is A2, right? So the delta P1 is here, delta P2 is there, that's right? So sum total of this is from the same formula because we had 0.827 delta P to the power half. V was equals to, you know, I mean, flow was equals to A. Remember that A into 0.827 A into delta P to the power 0.5. I think that's what it was, right? So if we now look back, now I have got pressures can be summed up because De, you know, pressure here is different than the pressure inside and inside pressure we are assuming it is constant. And from inside pressure to this one. So, delta P2 is the pressure difference here, delta P1 is the pressure difference here. The flow through them are same, whatever comes in must be going out through the same opening. So, V is same and uh, therefore, I can write delta P1 which will be equals to A1, you know, delta P1 will be equals to V square that is meter cube per second flow square 0.827 square again and A1 square. Similarly, delta P2 will be written in the same manner V2 square divided by 0.827 square 1 over A2 square. So, if I sum this up, I get something like this. That is what we have seen in the last class, right. So, therefore, if I am looking for the flow through this space, the room, then I can assume equivalent area as this 1 by A square, you know 2 by A square, something like that I can assume equivalent area. So, how do I do that? That is what we are looking at in the last class, right. So, how do I do that? So, next stage is write V in terms of rest of the things, V in terms of rest of the things. So, then this becomes, you know, 1 over this I can write simply if I it would be written as this will be written as this I can write an equivalent area of A if I assume on inlet as well as outlet same. Then it will be 1 by A square plus 1 by A square again right. So, which is 2 by A square which is equals to then from this formula 1 by A 1 square plus 1 by a 2 square. So, I can write an equivalent area A for the inlet as well as for the outlet and this A will be given as under root 2 by A is equals to this or 2 by A square is equals to 1 by A 1 square plus 1. So, inlet outlet when areas are different, then I can find out an equivalent area of inlet which is equals to outlet which is given by this formula. All right. So, I can then calculate out the flow. Now, flow would be simply 0.827 A, right? You know, 0.827 A and uh, pressure is taken as delta P we are taking. Let us say delta P1, delta P1 pressure can be written as half rho V square. Pressure, you know, this is this is so the, the rho rho part of it comes to this one, you know, V I am just replacing, supposing I write, so V is delta P1, delta P2. Express them, delta P1 in terms of velocity, express it in terms of velocity. So, delta P1 should be equals to some relationship V square, velocity square, velocity square at the inlet. Similarly, this will be related to velocity square at the outlet, flow is same, velocity square at the outlet. Now, half rho is 0 0.613, half rho is 
half rho is 0.613, right? Half rho is 0.613. So, point because 1.2 was the density is the density of air. So, if you take it, it's close to 0.613. That's what we are doing. So, 0.613 is this, and twice of delta p1 and delta p2. There are two of them. So, 2 into 0.63 area. If I assume equal area, then root 2 will come here because equivalent area of inlet just multiplying with the inlet area. So, then this term comes out to be roughly around 0 0.65 av, you know point v is the velocity and this is the velocity outside, outside air velocity we are assuming, outside air velocity v 0 somewhere in the open if I know it just I can multiply that by the area of inlet into some coefficient. This coefficient is taken to be 0 0.6, although you know by, by my simple calculation as if the v is same as the outside velocity, right. So, it comes out to be roughly around 0 0.65 a v. So, c is, c 0.6 is called coefficient of effectiveness. So, the flow is given as v meter cube per second is given as 0 0.6 a into velocity outside. This constant something you know is I mean it is some constant into a into v that is what we are showing. The value that is taken is 0 0.6 and it is called coefficient of effectiveness when you have windows both at the windward direction as well as leeward direction. That means, you have cross ventilation, you have cross ventilation that is what we have you know. So, 0 0.025 for window on only one place, only one external one not cross ventilation only one. So, this is these are empirical by and large and it is also taken to be 0 0.3, this value is taken point to be 0 0.3 for 45 degree angle of incidence for 45 degree. This one normal incidence, this for 45 degree angle. For unlike unequal inlet and outlet, we can actually calculate the equivalent area. There we have not compromised. We have only not compromised, I mean say no empirical values, but this coefficient is somewhat empirical. Coefficient is empirical. Yes, because you see this is the V is the velocity outside and V exactly at the window will not be same. So, this is what is used, this is empirical, but it is somewhat close to this. You can see that it is not very far from this. I mean the basis is clear, basis is somewhat clear. So, 0 0.6 AV is what we want and we use 0 0.3 when it the angle is 45 degree. Again, these are somewhat empirical. And for unequal inlet and outlets, for unequal inlets and outlet, you can use this formula. You know, so in practice, 0 0.6 AV normal incident wind, and for you know, this is for this is this is for only inlet. There's window only here, or it's blocked. The suction here, so there will be some eddies coming in, then this becomes 0 0.025, then this becomes 0 0.025, then this becomes 0 0.025, right. So, this is what is used in practice. A quick calculation you can do on this basis, but uh, if you want a full analysis of a large area and things like that, today of course, you have got all computational fluid dynamics softwares through which you can do it. The SP41 gives you two curves for this k coefficient of effectiveness. For ratio of area of large opening to ratio of area of smaller opening, if they are all same, both are same, both openings in inlet and outlet they are same, that is equals to 1, then this is for normal wind, right. For 1 it is 0 0.6, for other values, they this values you know set 1 is to 2, area of large opening is twice the area of the, then you got to find it out by this formula A square is equals to 1 by a 1 square plus 1 by a 2 square. You can find out with this formula or you can use this curve, where the coefficient of effectiveness is actually modified through this formula only. And you are taking the area of the smaller opening here actually, area you are taking this area when you take this for this coefficients. We need not bother about this coefficient, but this is what exists in SP 41. It gives you coefficient of effectiveness depending upon area of large opening to area of smaller opening because equivalent area will change. So, you take 0.6 into smaller opening multiplied by velocity outside, right. Same thing you can do here. So, you can do the do, do the same thing. You can otherwise use this and find out. You need not use you know. So, find out an equivalent area 
and use 0.6 AV and 0.6 AV. So, so if you calculate the equivalent area by this, then you need not look at this coefficient 0.6 into equivalent area into velocity you can use, but it also gives you SP 41 gives you a curve. So, that one can use also for 45 degree this was 0 0.3 and then this is higher right. So, that is what that is how you can find out flow due to wind as driving force flow due to wind as driving force right right. Now, we can look at the thermal force stack effect wind as driving force we have seen. So, all that I got to do is to start with just let us look at a little bit more. All that I got to do is first identify you know whatever your space is whatever it is whatever the size is whatever the size and shape is direction of the wind is known. So, for in this case let us say this is and I am bothered about only two angles either normal or 45 degree. In both cases you can find out the equivalent area using that formula 2 by a square is equals to 1 by a 1 square plus 1 by a 2 square and use that formula multiplied by the v outside into either 0 0.3, 0 0.3 for 45 degree angle of incidence, 0 0.6 for normal right. right. Now, all you got to do is first find out the windows or openings located in the windward direction that will be inlet and rest all will be on the lee order their outlet. You can sum up these areas because we have seen when they are in parallel you can sum up the areas when they are in series then you got to find it out by this formula 2 by a square a square is equals to 1 by a 1 square plus 1 by a 2 square. So, all windward areas you can sum up their inlet all leeward areas you can sum up their outlets in a given space right. So, that is what you can do and find it out. And then calculate out what will be the in wind velocity inside. Now, if you look at thermal, thermal is something like this. You see, if the outside temperature is greater than inside temperature, right? Now, let us say this height is capital H. This actually book uses capital H, that is why I am using capital H. I can use even small h, whichever is convenient, right? You know, center to center of this opening, height is h. Then what is the pressure here? Rho inside G H and what is the pressure here? Rho outside G H. If the temperatures are different, say this case inside temperature is greater which means density will be less, density will be less. So, this will be less. So, I will have rho 0 minus I mean rho i minus into g into h that will be driving the air movement and going from this direction because pressure here is more. So, it will cause air to move inside it will cause air to move inside and pressure here is high it will cause air to you know. So, so this circulation has to continue if outside temperature is greater then pressure inside will be more right because the density is more there you know this this temperature is lower so density is inversely proportional to temperature so pressure here will be more so it will cause flow like this so this is what is stack effect so it's a function of h it's a function of height you don't realize this if unless the height is sufficiently large i mean single story building you may not have much of an effect there little bit effect but uh, if you have a shaft, if you have a shaft, no, there you might find it, staircase shaft or somewhere or tall buildings you might see it actually. And this is without any wind, not wind assisted or wind opposed. Supposing my direction of the wind is something like this, this will be opposed by this. So, actually this will get reduced and if the direction of the wind is, wind is like that, maybe it will help the cause. So, you have to see how, how they act actually. Anyway, let us find out some quantified values related to this. So, this is how it is. So, that is what I am saying T 0 rho 0 T i rho i h is the height and rho i h is equals to rho, rho 0 is the atmospheric pressure outside minus rho i g h 
and inside pressure will be like this and outside pressure will be given by same you know atmospheric press pressure minus this this one rho 0 h i. So, if I find out the difference delta p this will be given by simply this formula depending upon where the temperature is higher flow direction will vary and this is the pressure difference which is causing the flow pressure difference which is causing the flow this is the pressure difference which is causing the flow right this is the pressure difference which is causing the flow. So, now delta p remember we already had ok. So, the density we can find out in this manner density is 1.2273.20 remember that 20 degree centigrade we are taking roughly about 1.2 and at any temperature it will be T0 plus 273 rho at 20 into T rho 1 T1 divided by T2 this is the density and inside this will this is you know this is the density right. So, inside density is this as a function of temperature and outside is like that into g into h. So, this is 352 this value is 352 you calculate out this will come out to be 352. So, this will come out something like this 352 multiplied by again g you multiplied by g. So, you get 3450 T i minus T naught you know T i minus T naught you can find out you take product of this. So, it will come out to be T i minus T naught because 273 will cancel out I mean it will actually if I if I take T i 273 into T0 273 this part will be T i plus 273 minus T naught minus 273. So, this will cancel out. So, I will be left with this temperature difference and this I can take somewhat average temperature actually this second you know this one I can take an average temperature and a fixed value. So, I can show that it is a function of delta T. So, that I can show you know average temperature that we come across. So, taking a value of T the 20 degree centigrade average temperature then this we take as 293 293 roughly or you know like some values like that this will turn out to this was 3450 how because 293 into 1.2 was 352 multiplied by 9.8 g so this comes out to be 3450 and uh, uh, this approximately this comes out to be 0 4 h delta t. So, it is a function of as well as temperature difference inside and outside temperature difference. So, a function of height as well as outside temperature difference right outside I mean temperature difference between inside and outside that is right. So, that is what it is. So, if I take this you know if I take this as the delta p then what will be flow 0.827 into, into yes into area and uh, delta t has come already. So, 0 4 and equivalent area of the inlet and outlet if I take same areas both and I take only one area here you know this is this is the area of inlet which or equivalent area of inlet and outlet they may be different right inlet area they may be different, but I take an equivalent area then root, root 2 will come here root 2 will come here and 0 0.04 under root is 0 0.2 0 0.04 under root is 0 0.2 because delta p to the power half remember it was you know 0 0.827 a into delta p to the power I mean here it will be you know delta p is driving the whole total from delta p 1 plus delta p 2 everything and delta p 1 plus delta p 2 it is this is driving the full flow. So, area therefore, I am taking equivalent area and uh, this was this must have been if I want to find out meter cube per minute multiplied by 60 meter cube per minute multiplied by 60 and this you will find approximately comes out to be 7.0 a h delta t to the power 0.5 meter cube per minute you know this 0 0.2 comes because under root of 0 0.04 delta p to the power of delta p 1 plus delta p 2 equivalent complete I have taken and a under root 2 is the equivalent area where a is the uh, equivalent area of inlet equals to outlet equivalent area of inlet equals supposing inlet and outlet areas are different then you resort to that formula that you have given you earlier. So, this is what it is and this comes out to 0 0.0. So, you will find this formula in the code sp 41 you will find this formula in the code right. So, h is the height difference between the 
inlet and outlet. Center, yeah. Now, supposing you have several of them, number of them at different levels, then there is something called a neutral plane. Neutral plane is one where rho minus rho i, right? There would be into g h into g h is equals to you know this is same this is equals to zero. There will be some height. You see if you the height difference if you calculate the from high, if depending upon some height from the neutral plane. I mean you can take it h one and h two downward h one up from a neutral plane assuming zero. Somewhere the pressure will be zero because at the bottom it is flowing along. At the bottom it is flowing along. Let's say flowing along this direction. Top it is coming along this direction. That means the pressure here is higher than this. Somewhere the pressure is zero. That's called neutral plane. Anything above will act like inlet. Anything down below will act like outlet. Neutral plane is where this is zero. So you can find out. Supposing I can I can do a little bit more complicated thing. In fact, I mean not complicated. Change your h value not from the bottom, but take from the neutral plane. So, pressure at the neutral plane will be yeah it has to be 0. So, pressure will be equals to inside density into that h minus the outside den density into that h you know equivalent you can find out. And if you go below then this will be minus h, h will be minus. So, accordingly you can calculate out a neutral plane is 1 where or it by you can just assume that linearly it is varying from top to the bottom and at the you know like it is symmetrical if there is no wind. If there is no wind it will be symmetrical actually the pressure will be symmetrically varying, pressure will be symmetrically varying, pressure will be symmetrically varying. So, at the central height you can take approximately as a neutral plane anything above will be either inlet or outlet corresponding one at the below that would be either you know corresponding if it is inlet up up outlet down. So, you can actually calculate out from this one if there are number of them actually and you can add them up all inlets you can add them up all outlets you can add them up in the same manner as we have done, but here pressures are different heights are different. So, you actually will have to the you know pressure that delta p will be different in each cases. So, delta you know you can you can calculate them out the flow through uh, similar height will be same if there is a flow here you can actually use Bernoulli's equation pressure at at that height you know the pressure here rho 0 plus I mean uh, P 0 atmospheric pressure P 0 minus from from you know minus supposing P 0 is somewhere away. So, you, you can actually resort to Bernoulli's equation the pressure head velocity head they must be same. So, if you equate you can obtain it from Bernoulli's equation we have not put it into the equation because that was not required for our purpose we are trying to calculate out only the quantity of flow, but you want to find out above neutral plane you take h 1 below neutral plane you take min I mean h below neutral plane you take minus h right. You can assume neutral plane here h varying positively here minus h along this direction plus h along this direction. Then equate the at you know basically pressure at velocity at and datum head some total remains constant from Bernoulli's equation. So, from that actually we can find out if we want to, but to, we did not want to do that all of our interested was delta p here because delta p to the power 0.5 is what is of our interest. So, you can actually find it out actually you can find out, but at the moment we are not really uh, doing it, but as a result you know basically if there is some flow from here velocity here the velocity th there has to be some velocity up there also because the flow has to continue. So, you can find out inside velocity outside velocity you can find out the pressure outside which is P 0 let us say atmospheric pressure right and then pressure here would be P 0 minus something plus the velocity here. So, you can actually find it out how much the velocity would be at even point, but we, we are, for our purpose we are not interested we are interested in deriving out this formula which you find in the code which you find in the code. So, basis of the formula in the code I just want to tell. Well, if you deliberately want to do it, that is like wind tower. You know, the uh, we said that Middle East they use it quite a bit. Supposing you provide a tower at the center of the building. Remember, I showed you that passive. So the you know the, you can provide it, but in a I, I mean providing that would be not an easy job to do uh, in a functional building. The functional building you can only calculate out the effect of it. 
right? But if you want to deliberately make use of it, you have to provide the tower, something like wind tower that's used in Middle East or some some sort of passive tower actually you provide. Stack effect, no, it is the temperature difference inside and outside, and also the height. also the height. Height is the main important thing. No, no, if in a tall building, supposing I take in a tall multi story building, you know, and let us say it is not conditioned area, you want to approximately find out, let us say you have a lift shaft or a shaft where there are openings from outside, just as the like fire lift, encased fire lift and there will be heat exchange through that or similar sort of situation even not encased supposing I have openings which is not closing right lift and staircase shaft there also this this you can use but this becomes more useful if you are dealing with fire because there the temperature difference is too large temperature difference is too large and actually where if there is a fire at a given floor the smoke will have a tendency to go upward it would you know whole whole thing changes and even within a small compartment uh, fire modeling is done based on basic concepts of the similar thing because top will top of the window half even in the same window top half through top half hot gases will go out from bottom half fresh oxygen will come in so you know this this is basically physical understanding of the movement of air due to what we call thermosiphoning and a thermal effect basically because of thermal effect that is what we are and I was, my purpose was to look into the formula which you will find in the code which will say the stack effect is there. Now, you see if the H is small and temperature difference is small this effect will be negligibly small. Next if you want to use in single story building it may not be much it may not be much because delta T may not be very large in warm humid climate where the ventilation is required most. So, realizing this is not very easy in single story building because height difference at best would be 3 meters 3.5 meters not really much. So, that is that is what it is ok, but we must understand conceptually then whether it is useful or not that we can see later on. right as an as you know. So, since stack effect involved equal inlet and outlet area. So, that is what we are saying fine. Now, when I have combined and each helping each other the flow due to wind direction of wind is such that it helps the stack effect right both are there we may not have both together, but if you have then delta P w due to wind effect plus delta P pressure difference if they are helping each other then I will have flow due to wind effect into some resistance by R square that is what we said you know all constant we are putting. So, I can write into equivalent area area is same supposing area is same. So, it will be written like this you know delta P T P T yeah it would be it is can be written like this. So, because resistance is same. So, V can be written as V square can be written as V W square plus V T square because pressures are added up. So, flow is flow square can be added up. See V is proportional to flow V meter cube per second is proportional to delta P to the power 0.5. So, if I am adding up the pressure two pressures are adding up then V square will be added up V square will be added up. So, V wind square plus V thermal square is equals to V square equivalent V will be sum total of the square squares will be added up. So, that is the sum total of the two that is the sum of the two that is the sum total two, right. So, any question if you have more we will answer then we will go to uh, looking at thermal comfort ventilation.